This is the faith of sort of a lukewarm. Religious faith is dead. But James tells us that. He goes on then, and he talks about a faith that works. And I've called this a faith for a long time. Faith for a long time is different. It's real, and it's alive. It's a faith that's filled with vitality and enthusiasm. In fact, the root of enthusiasm is a compound word that comes from theos, or God. And it means God in us. Enthusiasm. God in us. You learned something new, all right, for today. This faith is not dead. It works. The faith that works for a lifetime is inclusive. It's a faith that is hospitable to rich and poor alike. In James today, the scripture said, My friends, if you have faith in Christ, you won't treat some people better than others. We are all the same in God's family. One of our core values here at Church of the Trinity is that we are radically inclusive and inclusive. What is UFMCC about? Inclusivity, right? Making the circle wider. Inviting more people in. Telling people there's an open place at the table for you. Making sure all people feel welcome and included and loved. It's a faith of all and for all. It makes no difference whether you're rich or poor, your skin color, officer or enlisted, right? No matter what side of the tracks you live on, a thing where I, where I live. Faith that works for a lifetime does not draw lines where God does not draw lines. It favors no one and accepts everyone. The faith that works for a lifetime is also a faith that is merciful. In James he said, speak and act like people who will be judged by the law that sets us free. And do this because on the day of judgment there will be no pity for those who have not had pity on others. The only way we gain our salvation and acceptance is by the mercy and grace of God. We have no right to look down on others because they're not like us, or they don't have the same sins we do, right? The same. There's no judgment of others for wrongs that they do while we overlook our own. Jesus is the law that sets us free. And we have to let him be the one and only judge. We are far too critical of others and often fail to see it in ourselves. There's a little story about a man who was having difficulty communicating with his partner. And he concluded that he was becoming hard of hearing. So he decided to conduct a little test without telling it, right? We would never do any of this. <laughs> So one evening he sat in a chair on the far side of the room. And his partner's back was to him, so his partner couldn't see him. So very quietly he whispered, Can you hear me? <laughs> there was no response. So he moved a little bit closer, and he asked again, Can you hear me? Still no reply. Terry's laughing because this is something I would do. <laughs> And he whispered the same words, but still no answer. So finally he moves right behind his partner's chair. And he says, can you hear me now? To his surprise, his partner said with irritation in his voice, for the fourth time, yes! <laughs> the other person. So the faith that works for a lifetime 
is merciful. The next piece of it is the faith that works for lifetimes of faith is thoughtful. If you know someone who doesn't have any clothes or food, you shouldn't just say, I hope all goes well for you. I hope you will be warm and have plenty to eat. What good is it to say this unless you do something to help that person? You know, in November we're going to be a part of the mayor's, what's it called, the mayor's? Yeah. Feed the hunger. Feed the hunger. We're going to get involved and, and in November collect food for those who need that. When I was in Lubbock, Texas, one of the things that we did was we partnered with the Salvation Army. Now I know some of you are going to go, oh, <laughs> you shouldn't go there. <laughs> But you know how we change things? How we change things is getting involved. And I'm here to tell you they accepted every bit of our help and every bit of the things that we donated to them. Now, I can't speak for all the global people, but I can speak for the folks in Lubbock, Texas. We collected hygiene things, our youth group collected hygiene, and two to three times a year, we went in there and gave them hygiene products, handed them right to them, and we helped serve me. So we got involved. We see the need. And they accepted someone from our community into theirs. And so that's how we make a difference. And not just classify everything, but make sure that our presence is known and accepted and that we're loving and that we're merciful and that we're thoughtful and that we want to make sure that we're making a difference in the world. We also have a faith that is filled with compassion. Compassion for others. We have to see others with God's eyes. And your ability to be bothered shows your faith. Did you get that? Your ability to be bothered, it shows your faith. It should bother us when we see things like that. When we see people in need, it should rise up in us to want to help. I'm so excited because Reverend Wanda Floyd uh, from MCC is now in uh, MCC Kampala today, worshiping with them. MCC Kampala is our mission church that we're partnered with and that we're helping them out financially and spiritually and emotionally, just supporting them as they do their work in Kampala. What a great thing is that? You know, God has partnered all the way from Florida to Kampala. Who would have thought that? And you can go online and you can watch them worship. They have children, they're playing the drums. When we took up that offering, they went and got drums for their worship. You and I are a part of that, even though we're not there every Sunday. And now Reverend Wanda is there with them, giving them support. It's their first MCC visit from anybody. They're so excited about it. I was seeing that this morning. Dennis is so excited about it, he wrote this big old long prayer, I thought he's a Baptist for sure. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, they just like prayer. <laughs> and I just thought, wow, how exciting is that? And how great is that to be able to share? And to know that we're partnered with people across the world. And then how much difference we can make. Now the other thing is the faith that works for a lifetime is a faith that is true, even when fearful. In James he says, well, our ancestor Abraham pleased God by putting his son Isaac on the altar to sacrifice. Now you see how Abraham's faith and deeds work together. He proved that his faith was real by what he did. Abraham was a person of great faith, and he was willing to simply trust and obey. I gotta tell you, I don't know if I would have been able to trust and obey that much. But even in those times where we doubt, even in those times where we have fear or uncertainty, our faith will bring us through. Faith that works for a lifetime is also faith that's functional. If you go on in James, the second chapter, and read on after our lesson today, there's more examples in there. There was Rahab. She had been a prostitute, but she pleased God when she welcomed the spies and sent them home by another way. Abraham was considered a good man 
and Rahab was considered a bad woman, but both had faith that worked. Rahab's faith functioned to take care of God's people. She took practical and real action. Abraham and Rahab both worked their faith. Their faith drove them to action. Faith that works for a lifetime is made up of both faith and works. Works without faith is not enough, and faith without works is dead. They have to go hand in hand. And faith that works is made up of both faith and works. You have a faith that is cultural, seasonal, sensible, and minimal? Or is your faith one that produces works of inclusivity, of mercy, of thoughtfulness, of trust, and obedience? May the only seasonal things be your stay in Florida, or the fruit that we eat, or the sports that we want. And may your faith be for a lifetime, no matter what.